And do you guys remember simple motion that I have mentioned from time to time in this class, I hope? Simple motion, does that phrase mean anything to people? Yes? Ratana, what does a simple motion mean? Or do you remember any example of simple motion? Pulley. Pulley can be an example of simple motion, although, so what does a pulley do that you would um, call it simple motion? <laughs> um, so if uh, um, I'm using a pulley as a way to build a simple machine, it would look like this. I would have a um, pulley here, and actually I would have a string that's attached like this. And just so that I can pull it downward, I might have an additional pulley here. I mean, it's not necessary, but I might. It makes things easier. And then um, this would go around, and I would be applying downward tension here. And I would attach a mass to this first pulley here. And this uh, is an arrangement that someone might call simple machine. What does this device do? Let me ask you this question this way. Let's say you want to apply just enough tension so that this thing doesn't fall. How much tension should I apply? Do I need to apply mg? Or do I need to apply something else? Isha? It's less than mg. Here's the quick way to kind of get at it without doing a bunch of math. Um, so you have tension here. Hopefully you have ex this uh, intuition that the tension you have need to, this is uh, tension, same tension here. And it's the same string, no friction or whatever. So this is also the same tension. So on this pulley, are two upward tensions of the same amount of T here, which is going to equal the weight of this thing. So that means my tension must be half of mg. So this is an example of simple machine. Did we never go over this in class? Might have been in one of the sample exams maybe, and some of your homework possibly. Um, well, I should have brought this up earlier. <laughs> so what do you think the purpose of a simple machine is? Like what does it accomplish that makes it uh, kind of an arrangement that you would want to make to, for doing something useful? Steven? You can lift more or less. Yeah, you can lift more weight by applying less force than what the entire weight of that is. And um, do you remember any other arrangement that accomplishes something like this? You have seen maybe one more example that's perhaps familiar. I guess we haven't explicitly brought it up as an application of this. It came up in rotation or it could have come up in rotation, or you would have seen something like this in rotation. So this is um, why this is here. Um, let's say I have something super ooh, heavy, actually heavy. And let's say I want to lift this. You know, the way this is, I would have to apply a force of about two kilograms to directly lift it. But if I set up a very particular arrangement, I can lift it, not like entirely, but you know, get it to move by applying a force that's less than two kilograms. The way I would do it is I have this pivot point, I stick something underneath, and I kind of have to do it so that it doesn't slide out. <laughs> and, and so this pivot, you know, something's holding this in place so that it's not moving. I had to take this end and um, do it like this then amount of force I have to apply at this end is way less than two kilograms. Like, do you remember seeing something like this before? Do you remember using something like this before? Right? 
So jacks, uh, they use something different. So I actually have a jack here. This is a jack, right? Uh, jack uses, it uses something different. It uses this uh, screw thread that looks kind, works kind of like a ramp does. So that, but this is actually another example of a simple machine because um, the only thing that's operating it is your hand turning this, but this can lift a fair amount of weight. By turning this, I can lift, uh, I, I guess I haven't actually tried with this jack, but uh, oh, you know, I guess depending on car jack, you might have a lever thing that you move up and down, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I guess, um, <laughs> so at this point, I shouldn't waste too much time bringing up all the examples of simple machine. All these simple machines have really two common features. One of them is what's called a force multiplier. And that's what you have seen here. So all the simple machines, you can describe them by something you would call force multiplier. This is the entire point of simple machine. Like why do you want to arrange police this way? So that you can lift a weight that's uh, uh, heavier than what you can lift with the bare hands alone. Why do you want to use a lever? Or I guess a crowbar is another example of lever. It's so that you can move this object by applying a force that's a lot less. Uh, I think Archimedes is actually the one who said, is it Archimedes? Somebody who, some Greek guy said, give me a place to stand and a, a lever and I can like move the earth. Does that phrase sound familiar? No, never mind. We don't care. Um, <laughs> so, so, so you know, all, in all those cases, the main purpose is the force multiplier. You apply a smaller force to get a larger output force. But there's always a price to pay. I mean, you know, if you could uh, get this force multiplier without anything else anything that you pay in return, you do have like hundreds of these pulleys and that'll make you feel like a superman. You can you know, lift a hundred times the weight that you can normally lift. But there's something you have to pay, which is why um, there's a limit to where this is useful. So there's a quantity that you can, in all these simple machine arrangement, you can always say you might be multiplying force but you are not multiplying this. This quantity remains the same. What quantity here, if you were to calculate, would remain the same? What one thing have you learned in this class that um, you cannot get for free? Yeah, energy. So as you are using this simple machine arrangement, energy is going to be conserved. So however much work you put in here, the amount of work you get here will be the same. Meaning, so you were able to apply double the amount of force at this end than what you're applying. If you analyze this carefully, you will see that for every meter this can go up, I have to pull down two meters of string so that the force times distance is always going to be the same. It's the same deal here. With the lever, you look at how much this end is moving. So because of the geometric arrangement here, because of the geometric arrangement here, um, for like a 10 centimeter, oops, <laughs> for something like a 10 centimeter this far end moves, this end only moves like a centimeter. So if I'm multiplying my force by a factor of 10, then my distance goes down by a factor of 10, so that the amount of work you get out at this end is the same as the amount of work you put in here. Um, and it's the kind of same thing with the jack, same thing with the ramps, same thing of, with any kind of simple machine arrangement that you would have seen. And the reason I'm bringing up all of this is this uh, fluid actually gives you one more arrangement where you can get simple machine. It's a, uh, so you know, this idea of simple machine, it's um, kind of, uh, it's a general idea. There are many different arrangements you can um, utilize to get something that has a force multiplier and 
Um, same work in as work out. And the arrangement to the fluids gives you one more arrangement where you can have the simple machine. You multiply force, but you have the still the amount of work you get out is the same. 